This one is a GMAT hard math problem solving question. This question is from the topic counting methods. The crux of solving this question, the key idea is basically your ability to list down possibilities. So quite a few questions that appear in counting methods which test your ability to list down these possibilities in a systematic and a cohesive fashion. This question is a tough one for the simple reason the number of possibilities that we'll be listing down are one too many. The real exam, your question that is going to ask you to list down possibilities will not possibly have as many as what you will see in this question. So think of this question as a framework question to understand the idea and rest assured that a question that appears in the GMAT will not have as many possibilities to be counted before you arrive at the answer. Let's get started. Let's just read the question, understand what is to be done, list down the possibilities in a systematic way and then crack it. 149 is a three digit positive integer, product of whose digits is 36. 1 into 4 into 9, the product is 36. We need to find out how many such three digit positive integers exist, product of whose digits is 36. Let's say the number that we are looking at is ABC. The product of A, B and C should be equal to 36. We need to see how many such numbers exist. If A, B, C are the digits of this three digit number, then obviously A, B, C will take values from 0 to 9. That's something that's evident. And if the product is equal to 36, then it's quite evident that all three numbers, A, B and C will be factors of 36. So the first step, let's start by listing down factors of 36. These are all the factors of 36. Systematic way to list down factors of 36. Write 1 as a factor, that's evident. Quickly write down 36. 2, 18, 3, 12, 4, 9, 6. They are listed on all possible factors. We are looking for the number of three digit numbers whose digits are A, B and C. Which means A, B and C will be single digit numbers. They obviously cannot take these three values, 12, 18 and 36. So our use case values that are of interest to us are basically these six values. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6 and 9. A, B, C can be any one of these. More than one of A or B could be these numbers. For example, we could have had a number which is 2, 2, 9. The product of these three digits is equal to a 36. So A and B need not necessarily be distinct. A, B, C need not be distinct. Right? So keep this perspective in mind. So how many use cases can you quickly see? We're going to be having six possibilities. Saying that if one of the digits is a 9, then what happens to the others? If one of the digits is a 6, what is the other possibility? That's exactly what we're going to do. So this question, we're going to be evaluating six use cases. Start with the first one. Case 1 is if one of the digits is 9, what are all the possibilities? The product of the other two, 9 times, let's say the other two digits are A and B, 9 times A times B should be equal to 36. So A times B is equal to 4. The product of these two digits should be a 4. So what all possible outcomes that A and B can take to give us a product of 4? It could be a 1 and a 4. It could be a 2 and a 2. These are all the possible values for A and B. So what will be the three digits? One of the digits is a 9 is our first use case. So digits will be 1, 4, 9. 149 is a three digit number. All three digits are distinct. So how many ways can it reorder? It can reorder in factorial three ways. So there are six such three digit positive numbers whose digits are 149. Product is equal to 36. Second possibility is 229. The two digits are 2 and 2. The use case we are looking at is if one of the digits is a 9. So product is 36. So three digit number are two digits repeat. So factorial 3 upon factorial 2 which is equal to 3. So if 149 are the three digits, how many such numbers do we have? 6 plus 3 which is equal to 9. The next slide, I've listed on all these six numbers and I listed on all these three numbers. Right? Let's quickly have a look at it. These are the six numbers, the reorders, reordering ways of 149. These are the three numbers where 2 to 9 is reordered. So 6 plus 3 which is equal to 9. So case 1 done when one of the digits is a 9. We're going in the reverse order. We have done 9. Let's move on to 6. If one of the digits is a 6, that's our second case. Let's check out what all are there. I'm just keeping track of this. What all have you already counted in case 1? One? 149 and 229. I am expecting at some level we might be repeating some of these things, in which case we should not double count them. If one of the digits is 6, the product of the other two digits, a times b, is going to be equal to a 6. Because 6 times a times b is equal to 36. So a times b is equal to a 6. What possible values can a and b take so that the product is a 6? It could be a 1, 6. It could be a 2, 3. So what will be the three digits in this case? 166, 166. Have we counted them already? No. What will be the number of, what will be the three digits here? 2, 3. One of the digits is 6. 2, 3, 6 is the other possibility. Three digit number where two digits are same. How many ways can we reorder? Factorial 3 upon factorial 2, which is equal to 3. 2, 3, 6. All digits are distinct. So we can reorder them in factorial three ways. So that's a 6. So 3 plus 6, which is equal to 9. So we have nine such numbers. If 6 is one of the digits, so we've counted a second possibility. We are done with 9 as one digit, we are done with 6 as one digit. 
The third case, after you have listed down all these possibilities in a second slide, next slide, we're going to be listing down these three possibilities and these six possibilities. The third case, we'll be looking at one of the digits being a four. So before that, we'll quickly list down it in a printed form. These are three outcomes for 166. These are six outcomes for 236. So we've counted 149 and 229 in case one. We're counting 166 and 236 in this second case. So these all have been already counted. We have one of the digits is a four. The product of the other two digits. So it's four times a times b equals 36. So a times b will be equal to nine. So what all outcomes will give us a nine? We're going to get a nine with one and nine. We'll get a nine with three and three because we are looking at only single digit numbers. The product is anyway a single digit number. So what will be the four, three digits? Four is one of the digits is the use case we are looking at. One and nine are the other two digits. So one, four, nine is a possibility. We have already counted it in case one. So nothing new to add here. Second one is a three, three, nine. Have we counted it? Not yet. So it's a three digit number where two digits are the same. So three factorial upon two factorial. That's three such possibilities. So case one and case two, we had nine each. Case three, we got three such numbers. So let's move on. Let's quickly list down the possibilities for this. For the second case, we have swapped it, doesn't matter. So 149 already counted, no new addition from that. The 334, these are all the three possible ways in which it can reorder. Let's so move forward. This listing is available to us. This is case one, case two, case three. The cases of, are of no consequence. Just knowing that we have counted them already, let's not double count as it would have probably happened in this case. Let's move on to case four. We have done nine, six, four as one of the digits. The next one going the reverse order is going to be descending order is three. If three is one of the digits, that's case number four. So three times a times b should be equal to 36. So the product a, b will be equal to 12. a and b are single digit numbers. So obviously one times 12 is not possible. Two, six is a possibility. Three, four is a possibility. So what are the three digits? The three digits will be three is one of the numbers you have said. Two, three, six is a number. In second case, it's going to be three, three, four. Have we done a two, three, six? Yes, we seem to have done. So nothing new to add here. We've already counted this. All the revariants of 236 have been counted. 334 has also been counted. So nothing new to add here. So case 4 is not giving us any additional count. Small so case 5, we've done 9 as one of the digits. 6, 4, 3. What is left? 2 and 1. In case 5, we're going to be looking at 2 as one of the digits. 2 is one of the digits. 2 times a times b is equal to 36. a into b therefore will be equal to 18. Both a and b are single digit numbers. So 1 times 18 is ruled out. 2 times 9 is a possibility. 3 and 6 is a possibility. Product is equal to 18. Only two possibilities. So what will be the three digits? 2 is one of the digits. It's a use case. So 2, 2, 9 will be the three digits. And the second case will be 2, 3, 6. 2, 2, 9 has already been counted. Nothing new to add. 2, 3, 6 has already been counted. So nothing new to add. So quickly run through this. So adding nothing new in case 5. So zero addition to the count. Last case, if one of the digits is a 1, that's the only thing that's left. One of the digits is 1. The product of the remaining two numbers is going to be equal to 36. A and B are single digit numbers. So 1 times 36 ruled out, 2 times 18 ruled out, 4 times 9 is a possibility. So 4 and 9 are the other two digits. So use cases, 1 is one of the digits. So 149 is the number. Second one, you need the product to be 36, 4 and 9 done, 6 and 6 is a possibility. So 1 is one of the digits. So the number is going to be 166. 149 already counted, 166 also already counted. So nothing new to add in case 6. So case 4, 5, 6, we have not added anything at all. From cases 1, 2 and 3, case 1, 9 outcomes, case 2, 9 outcomes, case 3, 3 outcomes. Total of 21 numbers exist, 21 3 digit positive integers exist. Product of whose digits is equal to a 36. As I mentioned, in the real examination, you probably will be given a question where there are not 6 possibilities. You probably will be having 3 or 4 possibilities. That would be a meaningful question to solve in about two minutes. This question will certainly take three, three and a quarter minutes. Therefore, all so many possibilities will not exist, but the framework still holds good. Before you leave, two things. Sign up as a trial user at wzkwo.in slash core. It's one of the most comprehensive online GMAT course. Get started with a free topic, statistics and averages. Build momentum to your GMAT preparation. Subsequently, pay up and unlock the remaining topics. And lastly, Subscribe to the channel youtube.com slash Vizaco and spread the word among your friends who are preparing for GMAT. You may also choose to join this channel as a member for a small monthly fee and enjoy member-only perks that come with it and will help you boost your GMAT preparation.